After signals were first introduced, I ended up settling on this pattern as my default approach to state management in Angular. It's not the approach I always use personally, but it's the one I feel most comfortable teaching and recommending to others as a default. I find it strikes a nice balance between enabling more declarative code, whilst also being relatively easy to follow even if you're not super comfortable with declarative concepts and more advanced RxJS. I have other videos that have gone much more in depth, but the crux of it is that we have sources of change that would typically be observables. These might represent some data loading or an action triggered by the user. These sources would then be subscribed to in the constructor and we would imperatively update a state signal whenever these sources emit. This is where the trade-off is. We have this one targeted section where we intentionally set values imperatively rather than deriving them declaratively to act as a bridge between RxJS and signals. This gives us what is basically a simple implementation of the Redux pattern. We have actions that are triggered and reduces that determine how those actions should update the state. The key benefit of this style is that it avoids the necessity of the more advanced RxJS knowledge required to have RxJS hold the state rather than signals. In this way, we can make a clear separation where RxJS handles events and signals handle state. But then these new signals APIs came along, resource and linked signal. Resource allows us to fetch some data asynchronously, like we would be doing for our data loading source here. And as well as giving us the value once it resolves, we also get some bonus things for free, like a status signal that tells us the current loading state of that data, and an error signal for if something went wrong with the request. But this threatens this whole neat mental model we have here, because now we have a signal mechanism handling one of our async sources of data, which was typically the domain of RxJS. It's hard to ignore the benefit too, because we get the loading and error states for free rather than having to set that up manually ourselves. So instead of having this state signal and a source for loading data that is then imperatively subscribed to, let's instead just have our checklist data defined declaratively with the resource API. We can just entirely cut RxJS out of the process here. And let's also remove all this error and loading state handling as well because we get that for free now. But what about the rest of this stuff? We also have these actions that are currently being represented as RxJS subjects. If our add action is triggered, we want to add more data to the data that we initially loaded, or if an edit is triggered, we want to edit any of the existing data. So can we get rid of RxJS here as well? I don't think so, at least not if we're aiming to keep things reasonably declarative and not weird. Fundamentally, signals are not a mechanism that is designed for managing events. Consider this one simple limitation of signals. Let's say we are trying to do something like replace this add subject with a signal instead. So instead of nexting a subject with our checklist to be added, we set a signal with the same data. And instead of subscribing to the add source, we do the imperative equivalent for signals by having an effect that is triggered when the signal changes. We could then use that effect to update our signal's value. We are setting a signal in an effect here, which as we've discussed before is often best avoided, but this is no worse than what we were already doing with RxJS. We had intentionally decided to make this imperative trade-off here. These two approaches seem equivalent and on the surface it appears to work just fine. But let's get to that limitation that I mentioned. This effect will only run if the signal's value has actually changed. This might work in many circumstances. In fact, it works just fine in this scenario, even if we create two checklists in a row with the same title. Even though the object contains identical data, the object itself is different. But it's not unreasonable or unlikely to want to emit some primitive values like numbers, strings, integers, or even just null or undefined twice in a row on some source. We can work around this and make signals the vehicle for driving events in our application. We could, for example, just wrap any action inside of an object so that our sources will always be triggered even if the value hasn't actually changed. But this feels like we are fighting against the mechanism that is supposed to be helping us. Then we have other potential foot guns like this, where if we don't wrap this in untracked so that it runs in a non-reactive context, then we get an infinite loop of checklists being added because the effect keeps getting triggered. I think the better option here is to use the mechanism that is designed to handle events, and that is RxJS. So the end result here is that we accept this one weird data fetching intrusion of resource into the event space, 
by using it as the mechanism for loading our data, and then we keep our other sources as subjects and have them update the signal returned from the resource API. But it sounds like we're wrapping up here, but we haven't even talked about linked signal yet. How does that fit into the picture here? Notice how in our reducers we are updating the value signal from the resource API. But that signal is going to be undefined until the data finishes loading. So in all of our reducers and anywhere else we access the value, we need to check for and handle this potentially undefined value. A user should be prevented from adding data before the load has completed anyway, but in the event that this code is triggered, the add attempt should just be ignored. It's a bit cumbersome having to handle these undefined checks constantly though, so perhaps we could instead create a computed signal from the value signal that the resource API gives us. If the data is currently undefined, it should be an empty array, otherwise it will be whatever data was loaded. This is great because now our reducers wouldn't have to check for the undefined value. But the problem now is that a computed returns a read-only signal. Now we have no way to update our data. That is where linked signal comes into play. It's sort of like a computed, but what we are saying here is that every time this source signal changes, we want to run this computation. This means that when it gets the initial undefined value, it is going to be an empty array, but then later when the actual checklist data is loaded, it will become that checklist data instead. The difference between this and our computed approach is that this gives us a writable signal. So now we are able to have an empty array initially, which will keep our reducers happy, and those reducers can still write to that signal after the data has loaded. I've also tried pushing signals to the extreme in another scenario that uses much more advanced RxJS. And surprisingly, I was actually able to do a lot more than I expected with signals. I'll have a video up on that soon, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested in that one. And if you liked this video, please feel free to drop a like before you go.